Hi oh guys, um, I had um, uh, I haven't been posting for um, for about a month now. We had uh, had a few issues. Uh, the cat was attacked by a dog and all this. So nursing her back to health. Uh, I was Ill, Ill for a week, um, so they all, all uh, took a back seat. Um, anyway, I'm back um, back in now. Um, yeah, so uh, I've got a few days off, so I'm going to be doing um, showing you what I've been up to, um, what there is to look forward to for the rest of the you know for the for the uh, autumn winter season. Uh, and then preparing for next year. So yeah, so I'm down the allotment now. Um, all right, let me show you. So that's a rampant Taunton Dean. This is a kale, it's a perennial kale. Uh, this is Airwigger coal, which is also perennial kale. There's a little bit of, um, uh, what do you call it? The, that gray aphid. I forgot what it's called. Um, got uh, so, so we still got so we got that to eat over the winter. Uh, we can eat it all year round, but um, but when there's not much else, uh, we've got uh, broccoli. This is uh, purple sprouting broccoli. Um, I think it's claret. This one. So if you remember back in July, I planted these tiny little tiny little plants in a bed of clover, which I dug most of the clover up. I left a strip of clover, which you can see there. That's um, so growing much bigger. So this will this will crop in March, April time. And uh, so we've got that to eat over the winter. Got a few leeks. A couple of leeks. Uh, the uh, this area is me. Um, what I called me permaculture beds, these two. So they've been yeah, um, clover, clover and other nitrogen fixing manures, uh, green manures, building up fertility, which I cropped. So there was loads of shallots and things like that here, and potatoes. And now it's going back to green manure, but it's been quite patchy, um, the germination. So um, I've re sowed yesterday. Some uh, uh, broad um, field beans down here, which are a good uh, nitrogen fixer. Wherever um, wherever I've dug them up to put um, crops in, they've been um, it's been really good where the field beans have been. So this is where some of my beans were, my French beans. Uh, finishing the last of them now. This has all got to be um, well. This mare's tail on someone's got to be dug out. So um, as you can see. Uh, so there's areas that are um, sort of overwintering um, vegetables. So over there, I've got some Japanese onions, um, overwintering onions, and there you can see uh, between each row, the I put mulch. So this is all mulch that's come off the main, off this garden. Nothing's come from outside. So what we're aiming for is for a zero input system. So we've got we've got um, these onions, and they'll overwinter, and then next summer, early in in the summer, they're croppable. So over the winter, to keep them going over the winter, I put loads of mulch. So there's a mixture of um, French bean, holms, um, and grass and things like that, and clover, and you name it, it's in here. Uh, and it will rot down and protect the soil and feed it a little bit. So those areas that I've got overwintering, uh, overwintering, um, I've just spotted a hole, which I think is probably a rat hole. I'm wondering whether that's got rats living underneath here. That'll be interesting. Unpleasantly interesting. But anyway, yeah, so um, those areas where I've got uh, mulch is where I'm overwintering, overwintering uh, vegetables. And uh, where I haven't got any overwintering vegetables, 
I'm trying to put green manure down or I've just lifted stuff and I haven't yet put the green manure down but it's late you, there's very little you can sow this time of year so just about get some field beans in and after that it's pretty much rye grass which is not nitrogen fixing because it's just too late to uh, sow the legumes anyway yeah so there's some uh, had an emergency prune of this it was getting in the way it's an African kale uh, I've been digging up all the, um, not digging up, pulling up all the squashes and, and tomatoes. This needs weeding, the green manure put in. Last year's shallots, which I didn't bother picking, re sprouting. So we've got uh, green manure, patchy around the edges, but strong in the middle. I'll put some uh, just planting field beans in there now. Over there, so there you have some broad beans which I'm using. What I'm doing is putting garlic in. You put garlic in in the autumn in, in, in England. And we can do. If you want big bulbs you do. And this had um, uh, these, these broad beans in to, to provide nitrogen. Now I've, I've already dug one of these up. Now I've cut these back. Uh, and laid it down as um as a mulch with other things but that will release nitrogen from the so the roots will start to die uh, about the same amount to how much is taken off of the top so that will um will produce hopefully give nitrogen to my garlic which is going underneath it and then in the spring i'll fully kill the broad beans releasing all the nitrogen that's that's the that's the theory so uh, I've left one of them up here to to to, sh to show you what they look like before I cut them back. But anyway, plus this mulch will help feed and protect the soil. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. There's not been any manure on here for I'd say 20 months now. So or, or fertilizer. So. What the only feed they've got is from the nodules on the field on the on the broad bean and the stuff coming out of the mulch. So that's the that's the theory. Hopefully that'll work. Um, we'll see how we get. We'll, the only time will tell. So when we dig up the the bulbs next next summer, if there's nice big bulbs, then we've succeeded. If they haven't, we haven't. So over here, that's. Uh, See the clover, or I think uh, I think that may be trefoil. We've got uh, got some of um, some of these leeks. Again, anything overwintered gets mulched heavily, only with stuff grown on site. Uh, put raw beans in here, uh, field beans in here. That's trefoil as well, nitrogen fixing manure, uh, green manure. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, let me show you this one last bed and then uh, I'll leave you to it. So, this, um, this is clover, I think. That's borage. Uh, underneath is uh, nitrogen fixing green manures. Over there, some leeks that I sowed quite late in the season. This is where I had my French beans and squashes and so on. Uh, got to get those field beans in to fix some nitrogen before next year. Well, next summer anyway. But um, it's becoming less of a drag digging up. This is all mare's tail, but it's less and less each year. So it's less of a drag, it's, a night it's not a nightmare, it's annoying digging it up, but um, there you go. But it's less and less each year. These were sown, in, not sown, they were planted in July. So they're small, but they're, um, they're put on a spurt on in March. And uh, here's some um, sown much earlier in the year that's grown big. And again, because they're overwintered, uh, they're... Uh, mulched. Anyway.
Uh, I brought some, these are um, cloves of garlic I've uh, saved from last year. Now I said, um, if you remember when I dug these up in, I think it was June, June July, uh, uh, the, um, I said they were, they were small. They weren't, they were sort of normal size. Now I was, I was trying to do the classic, making the classic British allotmenteers um, mistake of trying to grow the biggest regardless of the taste. These were really tasty, so they were normal sized. They were tastier than the giant sized red ones that I had. So I'm replanting the best of these because they were tastier. So what, I'm, what I've done is select the, the um, but you've still got to select them. So um, select the best, uh, I'm selecting the best 10 because I only want 10 bowls um, of garlic. So um, uh, selected the best 10, now I'm going to go and plant them. I'm, uh, I'm planting these, I'm carrying on from where I planted the last ones, the uh, Carcassonne Whites, which I planted yesterday. In the, um, so I've got Carcassonne White in there, and uh, this is my Save Solon White. So I'm popping it in, making a little hole, five inches apart. This is mulch, I put it in between, so what I've done, Five inches apart, make a little hole. Make a little hole and bung them in. So I've got roots. I've I've uh, I put these garlics um, in a little pot to start them off rooting, uh, and we plant them in um, in August in England. To make bigger bowls, so they've been started off. They should do all right with this mulch. Um, we'll feed and protect it, and uh, that's be sold on whites. This um, this uh, hoe is um, an old-fashioned hoe, an English hoe. The ones we normally push, you know, the ones that cut along the, you know, like a knife. They're a Dutch hoe, and these are old-fashioned. You'll see these uh, drawn in really old old um, old pictures. And um, my dad bought me this for my birthday, and I must say. I think it's great. 
I think it's e much easier to use. You sort of draw it along. Oh, like that. I think it's easier to use. 